I just wanted to give a, a brief tutorial on the, the software tools that I used. Um, and one of the tools that I use regularly is a tool called Visio. Um, I'm using a standard version, uh, 2013. Um, it's a Microsoft product. Um, and here's just a quick uh, tutorial of, of the functions and features I use to help me collect my thoughts to develop uh, ideas into real life working uh, equipment. Uh, and it, it has a lot of functions and features that uh, I grow to appreciate over the years. The latest release, however, um, by default it sets an, an auto page sizing and on, under the design tab the first thing I like to do is turn it off because I like to collect all my notes and ideas to the side of the page so this is the printable area that when you send it to the printer this is what it's going to print you also have the option of of printing your your screen view as well so that could be anywhere um, on this sheet and then the next step uh, what we'll do is we'll come to the drawing scale and then I'll just make a, a custom scale to say every inch on the, the sheet uh, will represent let's say six inches so now we have a, a scale that um, when we draw things like a box so if you come and say I'm gonna create a, a, a countertop and I'm gonna uh, draw this rectangle well you could manually um, identify what the dimensions are by drawing a line, um, you would put some arrows on it. So you could say, uh, I want a left arrow and a right arrow on my line. And then um, I'm going to draw some reference lines on it. So we'll come down here, get a little closer. We'll put some reference lines on it. So we know that whatever dimension that we're expressing um, are at those edges. And then I can just come in here and type, you know, whatever it is. So I can click on it and pop up a box. So below down here, if I click on it down here, it'll pop up the box and it'll say the width is 18 inches. So I could manually come in here and type in 18 18 inches. But to, to automate the process, which is what software tools are all about, is automation, what you can do is you can come in here and say insert. We're going to insert a field. It's going to be a geometry and it's going to apparently be the width and automatically as I change um, change the length of my my line it will tell me what the the measure the scaled measurement is so then if I um, just take this whole thing and I can do a copy of that and bring it over and there are tools um, that specialize in this would be like a mechanical drawing but I tend not to, to buy or use specialized tools. I typically use general tools and try to, to get as much out of them as I can. So here what you can do is just select this and then where it says length, you can just type four inches and it'll make it four inches even. And then you zoom it in like that. So this is how I um, create like little models. So if we uh, look at my actual trommel design and things seem to get complicated in a hurry, but actually it allows you to manage 
uh, groups of objects as as if they're one object. So this is the drive wheel, which represents uh, this gray drive wheel right here. And if I come up here, where is it over here? I can say I want to group or ungroup, and I can say ungroup. And you can see that this is nothing more than uh, a circle within a circle within a circle. Um, and all together they make a wheel. And then you can just simply group them together. And the cool thing is, since it's scaled, I can actually create this wheel from the dimensions that were given um, at the website. So if I want to look at the drive wheel, so I got drive belt, here's my drive wheel. So here's my drive wheel. So I, I took the dimensions off the website to actually tell me, you know, what, you know, the wheel diameter uh, is four inches and uh, the tire width is one and a half. So I just slowly, um, piece it together whatever I have from the website because that's all I have to go on and then by uh, again this is also scaled and, and the scaling is different so if we come in here and look at the scaling this is actually one to one so if I print this out and held the wheel up to this image it would be a two-dimensional representation of that wheel, a one-to-one -one representation. So I go with two views, you know, uh, a broadside view and a, you know, head-on view. And then when you copy it, and, and you can copy both of them, let's take both of them, we'll copy them. And then we'll go back to our original drawing. Um, let's go in here. And so this is where we were at. And if I remove this and paste in what I just copied, you can see the scaling uh, resizes the image. So now the, the scale is uh, accurate. And you can just bring it in and drop it. And then you can see that this represents um, the wheel here and if I take the wheel away I have my pillow bearing which is right there if I take my pillow bearing away then I have uh, my pulley so it, it gives you uh, an illustration of what it should look like as you assemble it which is it helps me big time to take all these pieces and um, lay it out especially when it comes to okay I need to know what length belt I need so I can just <clears throat> take oops took the whole thing away let's try that again I can just uh, peel back layers of this two-dimensional image and then I can uh, take the pulleys and and then start my measurements since everything is to scale um, I can say okay I'm gonna take half my pulley and I know what the circumference is and I'm just gonna divide that in half and I'll do the same way with this pulley so then I know how many inches the belt has to travel and then I know uh, the length of of the belt f from these two points and I just add that all up and, and then I calculate, you know, approximately what size belt I need. So it has helped me immensely to um, lay things out before I even have them to make the determination of whether uh, I'm buying the proper size and if I change the size of my pulley 
that's also going to change the size of my belt. So if I want my uh, Tremel to run faster or slower, I change the size of my pulley to do that. Actually, it'd be both pulleys that I would probably manipulate. And then I would um, have to recalculate what my belt size would, would approximately be. And since I've, I've got plenty of room here to slide my motor around, um, you know, this is not a very high tolerance uh, project. So I can, um, I, I don't have to be too concerned about how close I am. I'm going to be in the ballpark. So picking up with the pulley example, this is a great segue into the next tool I like to use. It's called Excel. It's a spreadsheet, and this is again by Microsoft. Uh, if you're not familiar with spreadsheets, then um, this may be uh, a challenge to comprehend, but it's uh, what is used to simplify taking data and then creating functions that are um, use the data as inputs to calculate an output. So for this example, uh, I'm just taking the measurements of the outside length, the outside di diameter or length of the belt and uh, try to calculate uh, what the total length is. So I can come up with what belt I'm trying to order. So if I, if I take this, um, this is approximately, so I want something a little bit longer, so I'm rounding up. Uh, so I'm going to go with 24 inch, so this is going to be a 24 inch uh, belt on the outside diameter, um, which is an AX22 dash belt. So this is uh, like a very simple example of we're taking measurements and I have a little function here so if I change one of these um, dimensions then the total changes as well. So this is a, a very simple thing that spreadsheet sheets will do. If we look at something a little bit more complicated we're trying to uh, ascertain how fast that the trommel drum actually rotates. So typically the drum rotates um, on the uh, YouTube videos I've watched of other uh, trommels um, were around 30 RPM uh, revolutions per minute. So I was shooting for something a little bit slower because it seemed, for my application, I'm going after rocks. Um, if running it faster is important, then this would be a great tool to um, identify what would need to change because all I have to do is either change the speed of the motor. So the motor I have is geared down to 87 RPMs. So if I decided to get one that runs 100 RPMs, then this would tell me how, what of an impact it would have. So if all else would stay the same, and I just changed the speed of the motor, I would increase the uh, calculated uh, trommel speed to, to 25.4 RPMs. You'll notice in the red, I actually measured what uh, the speed result was. So I calculated 22 RPMs, but it, I, I measured it and it and appeared to be running around 23. So how much air was there in my actual measurement? Um, all I know is it's close enough for Jive. But this is why I like Excel, because I can just quickly um, come up with a formula that would allow me to make changes in, um, let's say, the pulleys. <clears throat> so if I come in here and make a size change uh, from a, a 2.85 to, let's say, a 5 inch, and then you can see that when my axle pulley is uh, changed from 2.85 to 5 inch, it decreased the calculated uh, trommel RPM. So actually I want it to, to go s s 
uh, faster, so I would make it smaller. So I'd say 2.85. That would bring me back to 22.1. So if I made it 1 inch, 1 point, uh, 8.5, then it would run it at 34. So this would be a, a, a more convenient method of speeding and slowing it down by changing my pulley. Uh, otherwise I would have to get a variable speed motor or um, actually replace my motor with something that runs faster. So this is uh, another tool I find very useful. So one more feature that I took advantage of with Invisio was what is called transparency. So in this example, you'll notice that this 2 of 4 you can kind of see through it. And I can demonstrate by making it opaque. So now you can't see through it. And the reason I utilize this is because I'm trying to minimize all the perspective uh, views of this trauma. So right now I'm looking at the the output of the trauma. Um, I'm looking at the input of the trauma. Here's the left side and here's the right side. So I really don't want to break it apart anymore because every time I make a change that change will ripple to all these drawings. So one of the cheats I use is to make uh, some of the objects that are solid transparent so I can see what's behind them. So I just wanted to share that with you as well. And then finally what I'll do is print out the four views of the trauma and tape it to a box which gives me a three-dimensional representation of the trauma. If you would like to learn more about the rock trommel and rock washer, then please click the link above to see the next video. Thank you for watching.